These old relics would catch his eye. He bought them one at a time, brought them home, filled the shed. That door was sealed up for 40 years, and they're out today for auction. So I ventured north today to check out a estate collection. This guy actually worked for Cushman and he just collected relics his whole life. They said when this building was sealed up 40 years ago, he put the cars in here. There's a bunch of cars outside. They've all pulled out. They said this was packed all the way to the door. There weren't even trails you could walk in here. 40 years ago, he put this stuff in and closed the door and pretty much was sealed in here as a time capsule till they've opened it and cleaned it out for the auction. Got a couple 26 and 27 Model T's, pretty rough. 37 Ford Standard. You can see the single tail light. And then they've added some kind of maybe 40s Chrysler tail lights on the quarters. Projector parts. Doesn't look too horribly rusted. I've actually never had one of these cars, so I don't know a whole lot about the market on them. Pretty unique feature of this one, being the standard model, it does have the V860, which is a smaller, everything, smaller size displacement horsepower than the 85 horse. A lot of the dirt track racers back in the day liked those little V860s. Wow, this thing's pretty decent inside. A lot of these 30s cars, you just see them down to the seat springs or less than that. But that's actually a pretty decent car inside. Not exactly certain on these. At first glance, I thought 49 Plymouth, but I think they're older than that maybe pre-war just something somebody pulled off of a junkyard car back in the day these T's are both coupes pretty rough but the 26 and 27 was an all steel body only wood in them was just for tacking the upholstery in so they're a lot more of a straightforward restoration than a wood body car. Waukesha Ricardo aftermarket cylinder head. Kind of a neat vintage piece. This one's a little better shape than the other, but between the two, probably do something with them. Old Ford tricycle tractor with the sickle mower this one presents pretty well pretty honest original piece now these Ford 900s are a bit of a break from the previous N series tractor they were pretty much intended to be a row crop tractor and over here is the John Deere MT nice restoration on this one MT was, of course, the tricycle version of the John Deere M. I do have one of these. I saved from the scrap guys and trying to find it a good home. These were a two-cylinder gasoline engine with a conventional distributor. And this one's got the Touchomatic hydraulic control. So we'll take a look back here. See that system and set up both pretty nice tractors and be pretty handy too all of these cars were last run in the late 70s and I think he probably just bought stuff he liked and put them away this is a 52 I believe Studebaker champion starlight coupe and you can see that really unique wraparound window that these had got the refrigerator style door handles this car's pretty decent inside 
Shame about the windshield. Pretty basic car. Three on the tree. Take a look inside of there. Just has such a antique modern feel to it. Almost kind of makes me think of being in a small airplane. Very, very unique collector car. This one's got a good patina, good old time-worn look, but the closer you see, it does need quite a bit of work. Just does have a lot of rough edges all the way around. These, of course, weren't really the best for factory rust proofing of any car of that era, Ford's, Chevrolet's, it just wasn't something that they'd really gotten to yet. And this one, 52, just not quite as desirable as an earlier bullet nose. This Ford pickup, I believe, is a 41. There's just a few little differences in the grill and the hood latch between 40 and 41. Too bad they sanded it down and primered it, because everybody really likes the original patina look on these now, and I mean at this point you'd pretty much have to paint it. Flathead V8 looks in decent shape. Just depends on how much moisture there was in the air, determine if it's locked up or not. One at a time, he put them all in the building, and they sat there sealed up. They're here to sell. Second video will show auction action. 59 Galaxy. Kind of neat colors on this one. Yellow and white on the outside with a black interior. Three-speed manual shifter has been moved to the floor. That was pretty common back in the day. They'd get some slop in them. Now, this is a Ford Fairlane Galaxy, which was actually an overlaid model. Primary model was the Fairlane 500, and then the Galaxy was just an extra trim on top of that. And so in 59, they had both of those badges on the car. So you can see the Fairlane emblem on the trunk and the Galaxy emblem on the quarter. Which of course that's a concurrent model with your 59 Chevy Impalas. Of course 59 was the first year that the Impala was available on four-door cars. This one's got a Y block, probably 292. Decent car overall, probably borderline project or parts, but if somebody really liked it, there sure probably isn't any reason couldn't be brought back. And being stored indoors always, always helps them. So in my opinion, this is a car that would, could, and should be revived to see the road again. And next in the row is this Henry J. Now these were a Kaiser Fraser car, designed to be an entry-level budget car. So they really didn't sell a whole lot of them. By the time they brought them out, the post-World War II market was already getting pretty saturated. And people just perceived them as a cheap car versus the Rambler and so the Ramblers really outsold these this one does have a unique interior upholstery to it that is the factory original and Kaiser Fraser they did have a thing for special upholstery fabrics so to me that really makes the car even old and worn like that 
you definitely want to preserve it to show the way this car was built. Cool little feature, it does have the Sears Allstate turn signal lever on there. People that know the history of these cars will understand the significance of that. 53 was a very transitional year for the company. That's when they started to acquire Willys and move that production very different direction for the company. This car, in some sense, was replaced by the Willys Arrow. Such a time capsule piece. Just pretty much left how it was when they parked it in the building. It's got the original keys hanging in it. Little service station here in town. Pretty neat design of those with the cutout K. 44,000 original miles showing. Got the accessory heater. Another set of keys with the little license plate tab. But that thing's completely obscured. Look close at this thing and unfortunately it's pretty rusty in the bottom. Floors are gone, rockers are gone, which that type of sheet metal work is fixable. I mean, it's better than rebuilding lower rusty quarters, but still you have to do it. And it does definitely affect the value of the car. But in general, that's a good worthy candidate to preserve as original. Unfortunately, a lot of these are modified and lose their original parts over the years, but hopefully this one go to a new owner who will leave it stock. I've got my eye on this one, but this sales attracted quite a crowd of interested people, so we'll see what happens. Another one that's attracted a lot of interest is this 1934 Ford. 33 and 34. Very, very similar. Hood louvers are the best way I have to tell them apart. That's got the straight louvers. Pretty original inside. Somebody did put some red primer on the dash. But, I mean, the upholstery's pretty all original intact definitely needs some work in the roof insert it's broken through the one fascinating draw of this car is the i believe aftermarket accessory trunk and you can see it's not just a trunk it has different spare tire mount it has the base skirting and the extended bumper brackets. And I mean, this thing totally, totally remakes the look of this car. It looks like a mid-priced, like a Buick or a Chrysler. Just really neat to see. Gentleman collected a lot of other things with small engines. And I believe this is an early Sears Craftsman riding mower. Kind of a neat piece of 1950s and 60s suburbia. And then got the Cushman golf cart. He did work at the plant. And so there's some um, excess inventory parts and other things that he just ended up with. Cushman had some very diverse offerings. And you'll see a lot of them on this auction. These old relics would catch his eye. He bought them one at a time, brought them home, filled the shed. That door was sealed up for 40 years, and they're out today for auction. And here there's a lot of small parts and engines. So the rest of this walk around, I'm not going to call out 
every little individual piece but if you do see something that I don't mention just put a timestamp and identify what you see now, this piece is kind of cool it's a uh, experimental not to be sold OMC engine surely for a Cushman and he's got it mounted on interesting little cart there looks like gonna be a trash pump of some kind does still turn be a fun will it run but I'm not that kind of channel but yeah again like I was saying especially inside on the tables any of that little stuff if you can identify what it is just comment below put the timestamp like this old flathead six I think probably Plymouth or Dodge but I'm not sure And this piece kind of interesting is an old steam smokestack. Either from a tractor or a pump or plant or something. That's a pretty cool piece. I'll be fascinated to see what it sells for. Honestly, for the amount of items that they pulled out of here, they've done a pretty decent job of organizing. Actually kind of impressed with the auction company so far just from the little bit that I've seen here There's just so much you kind of got to stand in one spot for a while and kind of take a look here's another one of these V860s and then another air-cooled Cushman engine some Jeep axles Everywhere he went, he acquired something to put in the collection. That's a 8BA. Kind of a desirable flathead engine. Small block Chevy of some sort. Probably 283 or 327. These old industrial Model A engines. I think they call that the Star Block. Guys really look for those because they have better metallurgy. Pretty neat boat. Then kind of gives you on Golden Pond vibes. Wood frame, I believe, with a aluminum skin. It's a little Perkins diesel. Probably another Cushman cast off. 64 Impala front bumper. Neat, neat old hatchery box. That's a cool piece. Various antique mowers of all kinds. I always like to look at these and see where they're made. It was a uh, manufacturing industry that had low enough barriers to entry that there actually were a lot of individual manufacturers several in Kansas if you wanted to build a lawnmower it was entirely possible to start that business back in the day vintage coat cooler and that box I believe is Model T 26 27 pickup. So the more you look, the more is here. I think he was more of a tinker than a hoarder. Because you see a lot of these tools. A lot of people comment on these oh, yeah, the guy was a hoarder just because he didn't do anything with the stuff. I think this guy actually, when you look in the garage that was his workshop, he did work on things. He just had so much and so many that <laughs> they kind of languished in the 
building and didn't get a lot of attention but he did have things that he fixed up and worked on like the tractors a lot of historical hand tools here as somebody had been asking on the channel about every video for old hatchet heads and i hope you're still watching because we finally found one but that thing i think is pretty plain probably a no name i would guess there's probably more in the inside if we keep looking super super neat spark plug collection definitely got my eye on this i don't know why but it's just a neat little tchotchke to collect see the pink firestone one there they actually had a it's more of a gimmick than anything but it was radioactive material that were in them and they pretty much were past the half-life by the time they were on the shelf but in the 50s that was quite the tagline few modern tools in here as well, but the bulk of what's in this is just a lot of good old vintage. Seldom see this amount laid out in one place. Kind of makes you sad in a way because I'm sure this old timer had a lot of knowledge and care for this stuff that's now gone. These are pretty neat. Early 90s graphic art Pepsi cans those would be great display pieces old hand tools woodworking tools all kinds you name it it's in there there's so much stuff here they didn't even have room to lay it out in rows and tables. I see some valuable pieces just in that trailer too. There's a 50's Oldsmobile engine. Those are kind of desirable piece for the vintage hot rodder guys. First one in this row, 1928-29, Model A, two-door sedan. Probably the most common body style they did of these. See a lot of them around. Next, 1934 Chevrolet, another two-door sedan. This one's got a really good look to it, curbside, but there's a lot of rust in the bottom. A lot of really good parts on it. If somebody did want to fix it up and had the ambition, I think it could be. One like this is probably, realistically, a little too far gone to build stock. Even though it is all complete and intact. You sure definitely could if you wanted to. The amount of wood that's in the bodies of these, after a certain point, you really have to like the car a lot and know what you're doing because they definitely become a labor of love. All that structural wood after so many years just take a lot of effort and a lot of work to get it back really right. Everything's got to fit. Got to be square. Helps your doors latch. And just not a huge amount of people that know what to do to make them right. And this LTD, I think, 76, 78. Uh, this is a color combination I don't think I've ever seen before. 
kind of a neat departure from the usual white brown or avocado green my guess would be this probably was the last car he drove a little rough around the edges kind of rusty inside honestly pretty respectable not all torn up trashed up crittered up like a lot of them we see this has that kind of odd burlapish tweed cloth 76 and palace had that a lot of these cars you pick any era and the manufacturers all cheated off of each other's test papers they all kind of colored in the same lines, drove in the same lanes. Every decade, these vehicles just changed so much. I mean, you look at even just in five years, the 34 Chevrolet versus the Model A. I mean, that thing is low slung, streamlined, versus 10 years prior to the Model A, this T speedster just such a basic rudimentary car kind of a neat build somebody started and then stalled out there's not a huge market for tees a couple more in the building here we'll take a look at supposed to be anyway like i was saying before if you see something in here that i skip over just put the timestamp and say what it is, because there's tons and tons of pieces. I won't call out every last one. It's supposed to be enough for another auction after this. They didn't pull the stuff down on the loft. Some old stationary engine trucks, Cushman motorcycle, scooter. Whatever you want to call it. Stationary engine. Not exactly certain of the brand on that one. Old Suzuki snowmobile. We're just far enough up north here that probably get pretty decent use out of something like that. Antique Frigidaire tombstone style refrigerator. Pretty neat one. Vintage steel kitchen sink. Any of those pieces, if somebody's restoring an antique house, they just make a great ambiance, really complete the look. Vintage coin laundry sign. It's a pretty cool piece. A lot of people don't like plastic signs, but you light them up and they look pretty good. 48 to 52 Ford gate and a 73 to 9. And this piece, I'm not exactly sure. Looks like possibly a chick incubator or eggs or something. A little far away from the usual area that I travel to. So I'm not sure what type of crowd will show up. But we'll see what happens. A lot of Model T parts. Now, here's a couple that be specific to those 26, 27s. And this is like vaporizer for the carburetor. It just helps the mixture improve. I'm not exactly sure how it works. There's a Goodyear boat motor we'll take a look at a little later. A lot of parts here. I'm hoping the auctioneer doesn't get in too big of a hurry and blow through this stuff. Because there's just so much. I don't want to miss anything. Antique belts. And this piece down here is a vintage hog oiler. Interesting history on these. They didn't really work very well for the intended purpose and they were a pre-war piece so most of them got junked in the world war ii scrap drives so they're kind of rare today there are definitely collectors that look out for them 
you know, all these antique parts. There's some probably that are reproed, but the bulk of what's here more than likely isn't. And so there's some good pieces that guys will get a chance at on the sale. This Model T was behind a load-bearing column, so they didn't quite get it out in the row. Be a fun extraction out of the mud floor here. Wheels and tires. Old tricycles and parts. He really didn't say no if he thought it was neat. He'd take it home. Antique bicycle collection. I will take a minute after I'm done filming to kind of dig through these tires. We do like our different wheel rims, making sets and that sort of thing. A lot of little widgets bolts and brackets and bits that he would have intended to use on projects but they got kind of stuck away in here and lost and forgotten about cushman axles just factory access parts he somehow ended up with Men's bikes, usually a little more collectible than girls' bikes. I think just because boys were hard on them and tore them up. Little stationary John Deere power plant. Kind of a neat piece. Sat there a long time. Fenders, doors, hubcaps, headlights windshield frames probably common to uncommon stuff gonna be sold be a long long day get through all this but I think they'll be able to do it it's kind of a bit of an odd what's it corner here you know what that thing is, comment and let us know. As far as this is from home, my goal will be to make one load and not have to come back. And I think with as big a crowd as here, that's probably going to be a pretty realistic option. But if stuff... Sells low enough. I don't have a issue with coming back if necessary. Just all depends. Sweat equity, time equity, travel equity. Always good to find these wheel rims that have been put up and not left outside to rust away to nothing with tires on them. See a couple in there that definitely can use, have customers call for. Antique radiators, heaters, mechanical parts, engines. There looks like a Olds 350 diesel V8. Not sure what some of this stuff even is. Old coffee grinder. Yeah, you see there's the finish date. 1980. Actually a pretty nice building. Did its job. Kept all this stuff secure and out of the weather for... 40 years. I imagine a chunk of the leftovers will go for scrap, but there'll be a lot of collectors that'll choose pieces out of here that 
help finish projects and maybe lay around their places for decades too, who knows. Kind of a neat old real lawnmower. Pennsylvania brand with a gas engine on it. Another aluminum bodied one. I don't know why, but these things are just cool to look at. Sensation. That thing's neat. Then this little stationary engine, I kind of learned something new. These are actually Cushman built also. Never seen one till today. One thing I did want to catch real quick is these manuals and literature. I think there's some pretty unique old stuff in here. This is a pretty fascinating one. 100 year old radio catalog schematic manual. Super neat piece. This was a totally different time in history. Apparently back then the signals traveled a lot farther than they do now. I read or heard that you could actually listen to radio stations in other states, which was kind of neat. This one's pretty neat. Relic of our country's technological history. It's pretty neat graphic art in here. These old drawings and schematics. A lot of history in that book. Some antique signs. Philip 66 collector. I'm sure like to have that one. Antique hose cabinet. Delco cabinet. There's a little bit of an oddball. This is a remote controlled car. Of course with the attached wires. Pretty early version of that. Made it look as close to a Jaguar as they could without infringing. And for our hatchet guy, if you're still watching, it's taken me a year or two, but finally found them. Man, these things are rough. I doubt there's too much collector value remaining in any of them, but there you go. Finally found some for you. Old porcelain stove. Believe that racks out of an old rail car. Plastic asbestos. Plastic obviously meaning that it flows. Asbestos meaning health hazard in the can for sure. Although being contained in roof tar, probably not too much of a breathing hazard. There's an antique car radio. Got the extra controls with it, speaker, all self-contained unit. Some antique cans. Little parts and pieces. All the stuff he... Acquired and collected. I don't necessarily need any cans, but there is a gas can there that I've not got in the collection, so I'll keep an eye on it. And we've got a, looks like a 50s Mopar chassis mixed with some Cuda and Challenger bucket seats. And a Ford drivetrain steering column. 
The craftsmanship and quality on this is actually not too bad. Put this against the cost of a UTV and somebody will get a deal. One little row here. Got the International Cub Cadet. And then next to it, pretty neat Cushman commercial lawnmower. This is definitely a good learning day for me. I did not realize the depth and the scope of Cushman industrial product offerings. Golf carts, the stationary engines. Old green tractor engine, John Deere or Oliver, presumably. Another old V8 block. Cushman made these trucksters too, and there's pieces of them scattered around. There's supposed to be a real rare tractor back here too. Hoping we find it. Partial Oliver, presumably. Maybe the one that engine came out of. And then this is a wide front case. Nice little compact size tractor. Sat around a long time, so probably more than likely going to have a stuck engine. few tractor parts and pieces. This is a Farmall, either F20 or regular. I never can tell these apart. That's little later one with the factory rubber tires. And here's that real old one. Yeah, this is a Huber. So there's supposed to be only a few thousand of these made. It's a pretty rare tractor. Steel wheels, of course. That's a brand that I never heard of and never run across. Be interested to see what that one goes for. We are up here in Nebraska, and it is tractor country. Farm All 706. This is an era of tractor that's really coming around in collectability. So that one, project or parts, but good potential either way.